Hi Beetle people, welcome back to A Beetle for Life. So today's video is going to be more of a chat video. Um, I'm going to be talking about the recent interview that Paul and Taylor Swift did for Rolling Stone magazine. And I'm also going to be talking about some McCartney 3 updates as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So normally on this channel when I do videos um, talking about interviews, I usually have a physical copy of the magazine in front of me. But this particular issue doesn't come out for a, a couple weeks yet. And I sort of already have my videos planned out for the month of December. So I figured I would just do a virtual magazine look through. So I have the interview in front of me here. So this is an interview um, that sort of Paul and Taylor did of each other for Rolling Stone's Musicians on Musicians issue. So the first clue that this was happening, you may recall I touched on this last week. Um, Paul's account tweeted out uh, 13 dice emojis. And people speculated right away that it had to do with Taylor Swift because the number 13 is very quickly associated with Taylor. Um, I personally thought it was just a coincidence at the time, but it turns out it wasn't. Um, so they appeared on this magazine cover together. And I was so excited to see this because as you know, I am a fan of both Paul and Taylor. Uh, that's Taylor on the orange poster back there. Back a couple years ago when Taylor did um, an interview and a photo shoot with Patty Boyd, I thought that was really cool. And this is just taking it like one step further. It's definitely like worlds colliding. So we'll take a look at the pictures first, although I'm sure you've already seen these by now. So here's the cover. Now I want to say all these photos were taken by Paul's daughter, Mary. And then here is a photo of the two of them together. And then a black and white one. So before this interview, uh, Taylor actually got to listen to McCartney 3. And Paul listened to Taylor's most recent album, Folklore. And Taylor says in the beginning as well that she um, had Paul handwrite her favorite lyric of his and sign it. So that's cool. I wonder what the lyric was. So it's, the interview kind of starts out with them talking about how they um, both of their albums were created in, you know, isolation during the quarantine um, period. Obviously, we know Paul's album was made in, in Rockdown and Taylor's was made uh, while she was quarantined also. So Taylor asked Paul how the quarantine experience basically has been for him. And he said it's actually been nice because he's spending time with Mary and his grandkids. And he's obviously, get, obviously getting into the studio, um, as we know. And they both talked about how the creative process of creating an album, you know, in this type of situation is different and how Paul, um, as, I think I've stated this um, from a previous interview that Paul did, but he wasn't sure that these songs that he was creating for McCartney 3 were going to end up on an album. So he wasn't like planning for an album release and therefore he wasn't being as much of a perfectionist. So things have more of a raw um, feel to them. And Taylor um, mentions that there were more or less no rules in creating her album Folklore because um, she usually thinks about things like how is this song going to sound in the stadium or on radio, but there were kind of no rules for this because, you know, everything's so different. And they talk a little bit about um, like numerology as well, like how all of Paul's McCartney 1, 2, and 3 were um, created at the ends of decades and how the uh, number 13 is important to Taylor, as I mentioned. I wonder if Paul and Taylor will do a, will do a collab because Something I wanted to point out was when uh, Paul's team on his Instagram was hinting at this, um, the dice that they posted were like in the shape of like a pyramid or a tree. Some people think it was a Christmas tree shape. I wonder if that means anything or if it just happens to be how they were placed. I don't know. I guess we'll see. It would be amazing if they did a Christmas song. Paul, Taylor, and Christmas combined? Yes. So then they start talking about set lists and uh, Taylor mentions that she and her family went to see Paul. Um, in 2010 or, or 11 um, and how she it, she thinks it was great that he played um, a lot of the stuff that people most want to hear and uh, Paul talks about how he he does try to cater the set list towards what he thinks people will uh, most want to hear um, at his shows and Taylor talks about how she does that as well like for instance Shake It Off is one that she plays a lot and she has played a lot but continues to play it at shows because it's one that people love uh, she actually played that when I went to see her um, in 2018. And then Paul says that he, he really does try to deliver at his shows because for people going to see him, you know, in concert, it's a big deal, especially for people who, you know, are save up to afford the tickets to the shows. He, he really wants to give them the, the best possible experience. So after that, they touch on 
uh, finding normalcy amidst, you know, being a celebrity and how Paul's children, um, Paul tried to give his children the most normal upbringing possible and how Taylor tries to find bits of uh, normalcy in her, you know, personal life as well. And, and Paul mentions that he used to take his kids trick-or-treating. Uh, he would wear a mask as a disguise. And Paul talks about how he tries to live simply. He doesn't live a super lavish, um, you know, huge mansion sort of life. And he mentions, you know, if something needs to be fixed in his house or something, rather than call someone and have them, you know, do it for him, he tries to do it himself. And he says, you know, it's important to um, as a celebrity, be able to do things for yourself or by yourself as well, you know, like picking out his Christmas tree, for instance. So another thing that they talk about is uh, writing songs that are about other people as opposed to being auto autobiographical, is that the word? Um, Paul talks about Eleanor Rigby and how he based it off of the older ladies that he knew as a kid. And Taylor says that's uh, that storytelling about other people is something that she got sort of back into with uh, folklore and how she... Um, wasn't writing things that were like completely about her um, but more either about other people or about fictional people even. And another uh, cool thing that they mentioned is that they were actually planning to play together at the Glastonbury Festival. Um, Paul said that he was going to ask her to be a special guest. That would have been so cool. But like I said, I wonder if we actually will uh, hear a collab from the two of them. That would be amazing. So obviously I will link the full interview below if you did not read it yet. Um, but I just wanted to give like a summary. So next in this video, I'm going to talk about some McCartney 3 updates. Uh, the first of which is very important, is that the album has been delayed a week. So Paul's team said that there was some unforeseeable production delays. So the release date of the album is now December 18th, not December 11th, um, which is only, it's only a week, so it's not that big of a deal, but I'm sure it will be worth the wait anyway. So I'm wondering if that um, actually relates to the new... Uh, merchandise that was announced. So Paul's website released these things called color collections and um, it, they all include a CD um, with a special bonus track on them. So I wonder if uh, creating those is part of the delays. Obviously, I don't know. But um, along with those CDs, there are McCartney 3 shirts, masks, hats, and actually sets of dice as well, like the one that I got from Capitol Records. So there's a couple different designs. There's a uh, yellow, blue, red and white. So on the US store, um, you cannot get all five of those items in a bundle for some reason, but it is available like that on the UK store. So if you did want everything in one, um, go to the UK store. Otherwise the US store has the individual items with a CD or the CD by itself as well. So from what I understand, the um, CDs that come with each color bundle all have a different song on them. Um, so if you wanted to get all four bonus songs, you would have to buy four of the CDs. I'm hoping that all of the songs will end up being posted to YouTube, or perhaps they'll be all grouped together in some future, you know, kind of deluxe edition. Another thing to mention as well, the UK store, um, along with having that big bundle with everything, also has the individual items um, just completely by themselves. So like just the shirt, just the mask, um, without the included CD that comes in the American store. So depending on exactly what you want you could pick what store to shop at speaking of shopping my uh, video next week is going to be my annual holiday shopping guide video and then we're um, going to obviously get into more christmas themed things obviously december is coming so be sure to stay tuned for that video um, and others to follow so as a preview to that the upcoming festivities i want to show you um, what i bought recently this beatles christmas stocking so i got this from the beatles online store and on one side it says happy christmas beetle people and then on the other it has the beetles logo and then it has the beetles all over it i have a shirt that pr matches the stocking pretty much exactly like it says happy christmas beetle people and it has uh, these pictures on it so you will see me wearing that in future videos but that is going to do it for today's video so I want to say thank you very much for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more things like this. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of Paul and Taylor Swift's interview and magazine cover. Um, I will also leave my blog and social media linked down below so you can check those out if you'd like. And as always, have a beautiful day everybody. Bye-bye.